at a top robotics company in Japan this week. Four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. I didn't know there was any other kind. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third, but the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. And this, this next sentence, is a, this is a quote. I'm, I'm writing this down. I've been doing this for years. This is serious Linda, but you're never going to hear about this in the news. A lot of viewers were skeptical, while others did not rule out the possibility of this actually happening. So I found this clip from an interview she did after the fact, where she explains in detail how she got this information and who was the whistleblower that actually conveyed this news to her in the first place. In the clip I'm about to show you, she also talks about how Elon Musk knew about these kinds of experiments and how he warned the world before this incident even happened. July, August of 2017. In the prior year, I had been communicating with uh, a Marine who had retired from the Marines but was working special forces and he had been communicating to me about a number of ET related revelations, secrets that he and a team of special forces were involved with. And so he had kept in touch with me, usually through short texts or every once in a while, he would call and say, uh, you're tapped, uh, I'm tapped. I'm only going to speak for, and it would be like 30 seconds or a minute, and then hang up. And we, I understood why, and that was what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it was in uh, August of 2017. The phone rang. I picked it up. I knew his voice. Uh, can't stay on the line long, but I want you to know that this week, which would have been uh, the, mid, I think, second week of August 2017, in Japan, 29 humans were killed in a laboratory that was producing militarized robots by the Japanese for warfare. And then he went on to explain what he had learned because they're in these units that something like that that would happen, they would receive information. And he said that the story was the four militarized robots were being made to be autonomous warriors and that they don't know why but the four rebelled or acted autonomously and as they acted autonomously they killed 29 humans in this lab and the whoever was left on the human side began pulling this is the way he said they began pulling the robots apart they got two of them completely disassembled, were working on the third, and then the uh, analysis later was what happened with the fourth. The fourth was communicating with a satellite that they were teaching these militarized robots how to communicate with the satellites to get information on missions, and that the fourth robot was now extending up to the satellite and was searching for information about how to make itself stronger to take on, apparently, the remaining humans. What did they do exactly to that fourth? I don't know, but I understand they took it apart. Would they ever put them back together? So now, we're up to a point in August of 2017 where I'm hearing a story that is shocking and uh, uh, I, I would say is like a warning that hits you out of the blue that if in August of 2017, four militarized robots being taught to be autonomous could do that in a lab, it made Elon Musk only uh, two months before in June 
at the Rhode Island Governors Association meeting. There were 30, 33 governors from the United States and Elon Musk was one of the invited speakers. And when they sat him down in a chair and they started asking him his perspective as being head of Tesla and X of SpaceX, he said, I think that the greatest problem that scares me the most is artificial intelligence. And he said statements like, people don't understand that the robots, they're not going to need sleep. They're not going to need sick days. They're going to be able to do everything better, faster, more efficiently, and smarter than humans. And then he went on and he said, I am convinced that artificial intelligence right now is an existential threat to this planet. The meeting she mentioned in the clip was the National Governors Association meeting, or the NGA, where the governors of 55 states meet twice a year to discuss issues of national and state importance and to develop policy initiatives that address the most pressing issues facing the states. The meeting also provides an opportunity for governors to meet with representatives from the federal government and the private sector. In 2017, Elon Musk attended the NGA meeting and had an hour-long interview where he expressed his opinion on several subjects, including artificial intelligence. Uh, somebody asked me to ask you this. We, we talked about workforce today, but they asked me, are robots going to take our jobs, everybody's jobs in the future? Or how, how much do you see artificial intelligence coming into the, the workplace? Um, well, first of all, I, I think on the artificial intelligence front, um, you know, I, I have exposure to the, ver the very c most cutting edge um, AI. Um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI. And I think we should, this is, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. Um, and no, normally the way regulations are set up is that a whole bunch of bad things happen. There's a public outcry. The, the, and then after many years, a regulatory agency is set up to regulate that industry. Um, and there's a bunch of opposition from companies who don't like being told what to do by regulators. Um, anyway, it takes forever. Um, that, that in the past ha has been bad, but not um, something which represented a, uh, you know, a fundamental risk to the existence of civilization. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. Um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, um, faulty drugs, uh, or bad food were, were not. They were, not they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization, and I don't think people fully appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not fun being regulated. It's not, you know, uh, it can be pretty irksome, but, uh, you know, in the car business, we, you know, we get regulated uh, by Department of Transport, by EPA, and a bunch of others. Um, and, and there's regulatory agencies in every, every country. You know, in, the, in space, at the, we get regulated by FAA. Um, and... Um, but, but, you know, if you ask the average person, hey, you wanna, do you want to get rid of the FAA um, and just, like, take a, take a chance on manufacturers not cutting corners on the aircraft because, uh, you know, profits were down that quarter? Uh, I was like, eh, hell no. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think even people who are pretty, you know, extremely, like, libertarian free market, they were like, yeah, we should probably have somebody 
keeping an eye on the aircraft companies, making sure they build a good aircraft um, and good cars and that kind of kind of thing. So, you know, I think there's there's a role for regulators. Um, that's very important. Um, and I'm against overregulation for sure. Uh, but man, we I think we've got to get on that with AI, Prano. Um, and uh, so, so there'll certainly be a lot of job disruption um, because what's going to happen is robots will be able to do everything better than us. I'm, inclu I'm including, I mean, all of us, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to do about this. <laughs> um, it's like the, it's the, like, it, this is really like the scariest problem to me. I'll tell you. Um, and um, yeah, so I really think we need government regulation here just to, because this is, you know, ensuring the public good is served. Because you've got companies that are racing, that they kind of have to race to build AI, or they're going to be uh, made uncompetitive. You know, like the, essentially, if your competitor is racing to build AI and you don't, they will crush you. So then you're like, ah, we don't want to be crushed. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, I guess we need to build it too. Um, that's where you need the regulators to come in and say, hey guys, um, you all need to really, you know, just pause and make sure this is safe. And like when, when it's cool and, we're and the regulators are convinced that it's safe to proceed, then you can go. But otherwise, slow down. Um, and, but, long, but you need, kind of need the regulators to do that for, for all the teams in the game, you know. Uh, Otherwise, the shareholders will be saying, like, hey, why aren't you developing AI faster? Um, because your competitor is. I'm like, oh, okay, we better do that. Um, anyway, so it's like, I mean, there's like something like 12% of jobs are transport. Transport will be one of the first things to go fully autonomous. But when I say everything, like, the robots will be able to do everything, bar, bar nothing. Let's move back to your rolling out the My personal opinion about this have not changed since the last time. There is not enough evidence to support these claims. However, since we will not have access to such evidence even if it existed, all I have to do about this is hope this is just another far-fetched conspiracy theory.